How do you attain profitability when your primary commodity halves in value? That's been the challenge for oil and gas players over the last few years. Here to explain Petro Rio's strategy for success, Nelson Tanuri and Renato Giosalmi. Nelson, 2015 obviously a very challenging year across the industry, but you had a highly profitable one. So how did you cut costs and turn the company around? We went through the same struggle as everybody else. But part of the reason why we had a good year was that in actual fact it began in the second semester of 2014. We needed to be profitable with oil prices below $45. And in fact, it wound up by even surpassing this low. But we were able to lower costs significantly to put in a variable component in relation to the oil price. So if oil went up, so did the supplier costs, but oil going down, they shared the burden together with ourselves. So the focus was very much on profitability. And above everything else, the reason why we had a good year was essentially people. We had very creative, very dedicated people who searched for returns and who searched for doing things the right way. So we come out of the year with a bigger cash position that we went in. We preserved our balance sheet. And from a strategic point of view, looking at our assets, we increased our position in a profitable producing asset, which is Polvo, and we divested out of the non-core exploration assets. So it was a good year for us. Indeed, it was a transformative year for Petro Rio, changing from a exploration company to a producing and developing one. What was the motivation behind that shift? First, it was survival mode because we changed from a poor exploration company that was spending a lot of capex in Namibia and in Solimões to a development production company which bought producing fields from BP, which was Povo. And the second part of it was the strategy fits much better for a small company, which you have a lower risk strategy of buying producing asset with cash flows then have a much higher risk uh, of spending capex and exploration so it fits well our strategy really has kind of three pillars you know the first one is operational which we want to replicate what we did in Povo. We want to reduce OPEX and really focus reservoir management to increase reserves in the small fields that are considered small for the majors, but quite a considerable size for us. Second part of it is leverage. You know, as you know, we are highly unleveraged, so we have a lot of leverage room. And finally, we have a very strong capital discipline, so we only want to do creative deals. So I think we're a lean company. We cut costs, we cut OPEX really well. We have a much better operations to generate value for shareholders. Looking at the oil and gas industry in Brazil, how are things going to be changing in the next year or two in the wake of the Petrobras scandal? The company's facing a lot of pressure, together with the fact that we're getting to the point where the major oil companies, many of their fields are reaching their midpoint where they're becoming a bit mature. So that's generally when a major will look to divest. And for an independent company such as ourselves, this is the perfect timing because from a balance sheet perspective in cash and from an operational point of view, we are the ideal company to be able to buy these assets. So we expect to keep on an upwards trend and ideally be able to make some very creative acquisitions. How are you going to be funding that? We're looking at first uh, leverage the company in a responsible manner. The company is highly unleveraged, so now we net cash at around $130 million. Also, because we're bu buying producing assets, you know, those assets, has, uh, they have cash flows. So we also want to leverage those assets. Then the second step, I think, after the leverage would be looking at some partnerships on an asset level. And finally, if we keep finding creative opportunities, we can always uh, think about uh, new equity. You know, we are listed in Bovespa, we're listed in TSX. So I think we have a good uh, capital base to, to raise equity if we like to. Aside from acquisitions, your current asset, the Polvo field, what are the growth prospects there? So Polvo is a field that produces around 9,000 barrels of oil per day. And part of the reason why we like the field so much is that it has a characteristic that we always look for. So besides steady production, there are upside opportunities. And in Polvo specifically, we just underwent a very successful workover campaign where we increased production. And we've also identified further prospects for eventual drilling. We're looking at drilling first semester of 2016. 17 if all things work out well and we should see a nice improvement in production. When we did the redevelopment program which was the first semester of this year we found a new reservoir we proved a new reservoir which are new sandstones. This generated a new prospect to us so that's one of the examples that we can generate value within the producing fields and as you know in, in oil and gas uh, most of producing assets has some exploration upsides right so most of the acquisitions we're looking at has some exploration upside so it's not our core but of course we're going to look at organic growth some some you know, creative exploration uh, upsides. Renato, Nelson, thank you. Mm, our pleasure, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about Brazil's oil and gas sector at worldfinance.com. And please subscribe for more stories from across the energy markets, as well as all the latest insights from World Finance.